Welcome to the Calumet Roundtable. I'm your host, Tom Roach, and I'm joined by my guest today, Besma Smita, and she is an assistant professor of electrical engineering in the Department of Enge uh, De Engineering Department here at Purdue University Calumet. Um, Besma is working on uh, several projects that are going to make our cell phones run more efficiently, and I thought it might be interesting <laughs> to get some insight into the technology that um, that makes this um, this tech, this possible, this this thing that's changed our lives so much. Right? Uh, one of the things that um, uh, that she's pointed out is that there are more people. Um, there are more cell phones. Okay. There are more people with cell phone subscriptions than there are people on the planet. Can you explain that for us? <laughs> yes. Yeah, it, it just shows the popularity of cell phones. So we know for, uh, for sure that many people now have more than one subscription of cell phones. So we end the number that we are uh, very close yeah. to 7 billion mobile subscription in the Which world. outnumbers the people on the planet. That's yeah, very exactly. interesting. Yes. Obviously, there's still large groups of people who don't have cell Absolutely. phones. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, who will care nothing at all about this show. If you don't have a cell phone, you don't need to watch. Thank you. Um, That's so true. But, um, um, so uh, well, let's talk a little bit about your research, and then we can talk about some of the applications that it has. Um, so um, one of the impacts of this is that the wireless technology is going to run a little faster and a little more yes. efficiently, if I understand that correctly, right? Yes. Um, and one of the things you're doing is you're, you're coding to reduce error. Can you explain that for us? Yes. Uh, so um, I, I think for, especially for uh, what, what we call physical layer wireless communication. So physical layer is more, um, we will just guarantee that you have the fastest data rate ever, efficient in terms of power and frequency. So usually at my level, I have a communication to uh, guarantee with a certain quality of service. Yes. So you have to get your files the way it had been submitted, but you have to have it at a certain limitation in terms of power. We cannot send very, very high power. So we have right. this milliwatt watt power actually to transmit. And then you have also a limitation in terms of how large the bandwidth, the frequency sure. we're using. So you have a limitation, uh, a regulation limitation about the bandwidth. So you take the bandwidth you have and the amount of power you have exactly. and you try to use that as efficiently as possible. As efficiently as possible. To send that selfie that you just took to your exactly, friends, right? Exactly, yes. you send it uh, as high data rate as you can. So yes. it comes quickly, the more accurate. So like the coding is one way to do that. So when we are in the digital communication, which is the case like yes. now, you can see all the files, the image, at the digital level, they're more like zeros and one when you send right. them through. Uh, so after all these years, we're still just using zeros and ones. Still zeros and ones. Okay, <laughs> that's fine. Just wondering. Okay. This is how this is how communication and computer science everything else together. gets more sophisticated <laughs> and advanced, but we're still using two numbers essentially. Exactly. Right? Okay, that's good. So uh, definitely at the coding level, we have a lot of zeros yeah. and ones. Okay. So when you ha so whatever we're sending is a bunch of zeros and one, and of course you send them in terms of buffer. So you send the first buffer, the second yeah. buffer. When you send them through wireless communication. So wireless communication is a very tough channel. The distortion that the wireless communication do to the channel, like versus fiber optic, yeah. let's say, is definitely much, much higher distortion. So the chance that the zeros you receive it flips to one or the one you receive is zero are very, very high. So you have you receive a packet that some of the bit have been flipped. So, so wait, so these computers are supposed to be so smart they can't tell the difference between one and some zeros? The, the, the idea in communication um, yeah. is, is actually if you code it smart enough, yeah. even though some of the bit flips, you can correct it back. Okay. Which is what slows it down, right? Yes. Of so, I the, mean, so the software essentially looks at what's coming in, decides that it's screwed up, and then asks it to resend. If you cannot decode yes. it, you will send to resend. And this yeah. is what slowed us back. Because yeah. if you cannot, you're not able to decode the packet, then you send an saying a NAC, and you don't read the packet, then the transmitter will send you the packet again. And that's right. really a lot of delay. So you would like a packet that to be very resilient. So the, the, the channel will always make some errors, but you, you can do your coding in a way that at the receiver side, you still be able to decode the packet right. that some of the bits have been flipped. And it's, it's a huge world of research, how to yeah. decode it, how to encode it so you can decode it perfectly, despite the errors in the channel. Yeah. Well, I, that's good. I just you know, didn't <laughs> think that my computer needed that help, but um, it's interesting. So um, you, you've also um, got a grant uh, to work on or to enhance cell uh, efficiency. Can you yes. explain that? Yes. So this is also the same a little bit uh, in the same uh, 
um, context, I would say. Yes. So uh, when I talk about uh, f spectrum efficiency, it's the same thing, but now I will focus more on the frequency. Okay. So what happened nowadays, when, when people call, so let's focus just on cell phones. So when you call, you actually call a base station. So it's like a centralized unit. And that we call that what we call uplink. So from the mobile to the base station is the uplink. Yes. And let's say you're calling even someone else in the same base station. Then from the base station to the other mobile, we will call that the downlink. And of course, when someone else is talking back, you have the same link up and down. But you, ha you don't have a direct link. The idea is everything toward the base station is what we call uplink, or everything from the base station to the mobile is what we call the downlink. Yes. Uh, nowadays, all the application we have, Wi-Fi, cell phone, 2G, 3G, 4G, what they do, they do a separation between uplink and downlink. So it's either different time slots, so there was no interference. Like the same thing a walkie-talkie does, if yes, I understand this, exactly. right? You're either or, talking or you're listening. Exactly. You don't do both at the same or time. the more sophisticated one that you don't hear it much in a cell phone, yeah. they will use two bandwidths, two separate bandwidths. So I'll be, all my uplink will be within certain frequencies, and all my downlink is within different frequencies. Ah, but so they, they never can overlap. go on simultaneously. Yes. But when did that ha I'm just curious, when did that happen? I think since the 2G it's happening, what we call FTD, the frequency yeah. duplexes. So I remember when I yeah. had my first cell phone, you couldn't talk while the other person yes. was talking, right? And now it seems like yeah, especially it the talkie walkie. Is obviously, you can't really. Yeah, it's yeah. like it's a hard connection. But now it's what we call FDD, the okay. frequency division duplex, when you talk at the same time, but it's actually at different frequencies. Right. So the the the, the objective for my. So the idea for all this story is we would don't would like to see interference between uplink and downlink. Right. So the idea is recently there are some study that people are saying, you know what, this limitation make us lose half of the spectrum when we know that we actually can do uplink and downlink at the same time. The idea here, when you're sending and you're receiving at the same time, at the same frequency, the main issue is you're transmitting at very high power, mm -hmm. but what you receive is a signal that have been distorted through the channel and the propagation, so it's a very weak signal. Okay. So you're kind of doing self-interference to yourself. So you're sending yes. and receiving at the same time, right. and it's strong power versus a very weak power yeah. signal. The good news about it is you know what you're sending. Right. It's you are the sender. So in, theoretically, you can say, I can just subtract that self-interference and get a clean signal received. And no need to have to avoid the interference, I will call it. it. Sounds like an algebra problem. Exactly. Yes, the truth, of course, that. is wireless yes. with all the practicality, all the, the, what the channel do, the signal is so unpredictable that we cannot do the x minus x. We will always have x minus something that it's close to X. So there will always be some residual self-interference. Right. But most of the signal, we can handle it, and we know that we will do that today. So my, my, that's my research. This is the five-year research. I kind of, I think, yes, we can do that. I think if we see the problem more from electromagnetism field and we solve it at the antenna level, we definitely have a so, hope. Um, at, at the risk of um, getting too deep into the well here, <laughs> yeah. um, tell me about electromagnetism and how that impacts this. So when we transmit communications, yes. of course, wireless communication, it's electromagnetism field. But electromagnetism is not really just the So all wave. of these signals are it's electromagnetic. It's everything from light. This is an electromagnetism wave at a certain frequency. Of course, okay. we have a very dangerous wave, which are like, X-rays and the gamma rays from atomic bombs. So that's we try to avoid them. Good. Yeah. We are in a wireless communication in a safe way. Those waves exist before we use them. So that's yes. not. So I think in terms of safety, it's all about the power. I think it has to be very clear because we live in a world that we have all electromagnetism around us. We don't see them, but they are there. Right. So it's a matter of controlling the power. And I think one milliwatt is very small. So I think it's, yeah. it will always be a matter of what's the power. And so, uh, so the kind of work you're doing, if it makes these systems more efficient, then yes. it makes them require less power. So Absolutely. if we're worried about our exposure here, we're getting exposed Exactly. And I think also uh, we are going toward having more like indoor connection, and those, they will always use less power. So oh, it's so more the Wi-Fi is using less power. Exactly. So it's, it's, it doesn't seem to be very common, but if you are in rural area, the dangers yeah. of, of 
radio propagation could be higher because they have to cover like, I don't know, two yeah. or three miles cell radio. So the base station have to really have to transmit as very high power to reach everyone. When, when you are in downtown or indoor or Wi-Fi, those they use very little power. And they do it in purpose, so they don't interfere with each other. So there is no uh, overuse of power. And, and um, if you were to, if we can do this, I mean, if you were to compare these with one another, um, we have like Bluetooth and yeah. Wi-Fi and then whatever the cell phone's broadcasting over. Which, which one of those is, is the strongest power what the cell phone's using? I think so, yes, the cell phone, especially if it's outside. If you are in a mall or, I don't know, subway, depending on the place, then it yeah. will be an indoor cell that will be the same power almost as the Wi-Fi. The limitation for all of them is, I think, it's one milliwatt, so I don't and, think you can have higher than that. And yeah. how would you compare the Bluetooth with the Wi-Fi? I think it depends on the application. So, you know, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, it doesn't guarantee any mobility. Per se, Bluetooth is definitively short-range application. Yeah. Uh, Wi-Fi is okay within the same house, but if you leave the house, you will not have a connection. Versus the cell phone, guarantee a real mobility when you go and you still have the connection with you all the time. Right. So it's an, a different application. Right. Yeah, I don't see them competing. I see them complementing sure. each yeah, other. And, and, I, and I appreciate that the that the, the kind of work you're doing um, uh, cuts down on the intensity of that. Um, do you think that we're do you think the general public is um, aware enough about these uh, these signals, and do you, do you think that we, you know, that we're overlooking a problem here, or do you think that it's? Uh, um, I don't know. Are you asking about the safety? Yeah, the safety side of it. Yeah, yeah. it I comes up every now. And yeah, then. I, I know. I I personally don't think there is a serious issue there, as long as yeah. long as we are staying with the, the limitation of the power, and as long as someone doesn't live under a base station that you're transmitting right. all the time. So it's a matter of not being within the electromagnetic field with high power right. all the time. Right. So as long as this is reasonable, I don't think, but yeah. I, uh, I think obviously we need to study that with all this uh, yeah. application and services everywhere, yes. And uh, because I know, you know, now that Apple's come out with their new watch and, yeah. and we seem to be, um, you know, covering ourselves with more and more, <laughs> more devices more like that are that sending and receiving <laughs> signals. We're sitting here with these microphones exactly. on Absolutely. under these lights right now. Right? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so, I mean, you know, do you do you see that sort of becoming more of a concern, or do you think we're still relatively operating in a safe? I, I honestly think zone we, um, here. we are in a very safe zone. As yeah. I told you, the system itself wouldn't allow to use a lot of power because it will interfere and we will try to avoid interference because if you're transmitting too much power with your let's say your iphone yeah, watch yeah. and you sit close to someone else with an iphone watch and you're interfering with the other person yeah. this is not good for the communication itself so as i think as long as the requirement in terms of maximum power is uh, respected i think it's very safe okay and as i said it's everywhere i mean we don't see them but electromagnetic fields are everywhere so. yeah okay very good um we're going to be back after a quick commercial break. I'm talking with uh, Dr. Smita about um, cell phone technology and electromagnetic waves. Uh, we'll be right back. Welcome back to the Calumet Roundtable. I'm your host, Tom Roach. My guest today is Dr. Besma Smita, uh, and we're talking about the research she's doing on, on wireless uh, technology and how that might impact our lives uh, now and in the future. Um, I, I'd like to uh, back off of that for just a second and ask you uh, what you teach and maybe talk to you a little bit about how this relates to your teaching. Yes, so I teach um, uh, Introduction to Communication and this is to me, of course, very dear to my heart. So it's a course for senior students. So they're like, uh, I, I like the energy, they're very interactive usually. So that's for them the first course when we teach communication. Now in electrical engineering, when you say communication, yeah. uh, you don't mean what we mean. In my department, we make people give speeches, yes. right? So yeah, I your used students to, I, giving I used, five I, I used speeches. to joke, I say, we, I teach communication, but I don't care about the meaning. I'm just sending a message from yes. A to B. <laughs> so, so. <laughs> so how do you define it then for yes, us? Yes, I, I define it as sending a message from one, one source to a destination, and of course the source and destination 
person are supposed to be so, far away. So yes. we're all using the, the sender-receiver model exactly. essentially, right? Yes, it's just exactly. that we're talking about um, human speech most of the time, and yes. you're talking about electrical Exactly. Electromagnetic impulses, exactly. if I'm understanding yes. this yes. correctly, yes. right? Exactly. Yes. yes, yes. And the message could be a voice or a file or a picture or a movie or whatever we would yeah. like to send, yes. Absolutely. So so that's the, uh, that's the undergrad course. I teach uh, three other graduate courses, depending on the semester, and they're all more like in digital communication, very specifically. So I teach one, which is information theory, what I think really is the foundation of uh, digital communication. And I think we can use it more than communication, for sure. It just shows the limit, how much information we can actually transmit. So I, I like it a lot. It's a, it's a very theoretical, but I think it really shows the why we're doing what we're doing right now in communication. And it really explains why communication is so popular, why this exponential growth in communication. It's all based on this mathematical view of communication that helps a lot build the system. It's not just engineering view, but you have the math with the engineering. It makes system very, very efficient. Um, and I have a digital communication and estimation of detection, which is more like for radar, when you try to oh. estimate and detect uh, using wireless communication. So, and I have another course more for freshmen, it's more programming, but I don't teach much communication at that. It's yeah, that covers a lot of ground. Yeah. Well, when you say the growth and the interest in this, uh, you mean amongst students or just the use of the technology? Or? The use of technology, of course, yeah. nowadays. So yeah. how many, I mean, obviously no one now can know how we can meet with someone without cell phone, without right. uh, emails. It's just right. we have it everywhere. <laughs> yeah. We can't imagine our life. When I start doing research on wireless communication, I yeah. don't have a cell phone myself. <laughs> so Is that it's right? Yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> so what attracted you to this? I, I, I honestly, I really like the challenge that it's it's something in between the physics. So you need to know what we we're talking about. We we're talking about electromagnetic wave at the yeah. level at that level. But there is a lot of math on it. There is a lot of what we call probability because you. You can see what the receiver is receiving. You see the message yeah. that you don't know about it. So there is some randomness to the message. Yeah. So and, and it's very nice to see that the same system you can see it from physics and electromagnetic field, and, or you see it from mathematical point of and, view. And what are the you know what are the real mysteries of this this field here? What's the guard particle? What are the things that you know that are unexplained? I think I, I think uh, the, the mysteries is and this is from my course in information theory. Sure. There is this yeah. American mathematician. Uh, his name is Claude Shannon, and Claude Shannon actually he he gave us the limit how much we can transmit in terms of data rate yes. per hertz. And the mystery here is the limit is here and we're still far away from the limit. Yeah. And the whole field we are running to get to this limit, the maximum yeah. data rate, we know mathematically with the theorem and the proof that the maximum is here. We're not there yet. But it's very nice that in some channel, in some scenario, we get very close. And that's mm -hmm. very fantastic. So oh, I have the code that yes. actually reached Shannon capacity. That's a huge thing to be close to Shannon capacity. Yeah. So I think that's a very nice in communication. I don't think in many engineering fields we have a theoretical foundation so yeah. clearly defined and tell you you can go as fast as this. Just how do we do it? How we do it? It's your yeah. the field is yours. Just but you know that's the, the target. And that's when you great. get it, you can stop. <laughs> you can relax, I guess. Uh, that would be exciting for a student. <laughs> absolutely. To get involved in that process. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Exactly. And then uh, in industry, who's most interested in this? I would imagine the cell phone companies absolutely, would love to. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, there is a lot of money there, and of yeah. course, but uh, so they're paying for a lot of research. Absolutely. And then there's a lot of research going on at the university. Yes. There is also the finance, which we don't know much about it, but yeah. those milliseconds of transaction when you sell, when you buy, it yeah. matters for them. Those milliseconds of transaction, they're very important. They really need their yeah. connection to be as fast and so as accurate. So what if you discover this, uh, you know, the secret to doing this? What would happen? <laughs> you'd, you'd get bought away by some, some company would come in here and offer you a million dollars yeah, and steal so. you away from us. Right? Absolutely. I think yeah. that would be a good time for me to switch to another topic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but Purdue would hold the patent, I think, as I understand Absolutely, it. Absolutely, yes. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we're, you're, at, you're at their mercy. Yeah. Um, well, you know, give me a call if you uh, if you figure it out. <laughs> um, you know, there's this joke about the whoever somebody discovered the zero and he, you know, and yeah, he, they shouted, it. I've got it, I've got it. And the assistant <laughs> said what? And he said, oh, nothing. It's not a great joke. <laughs> anyway, um, so let's uh, let's look at the um, uh, some of the advances that that might change our lives here. Okay, yeah. um, it, what what happens if we can we can do this more efficiently? We can we can send these signals and receive them more efficiently, more smoothly. 
I think we, our life already changed for sure. Yeah. But the truth is nowadays, even though we have a feeling, and this is true, if you are like in downtown close to uh, a city or uh, yeah. a small town, it's true that you have coverage everywhere and we have LTD with high speed internet yeah. everywhere. But anyone who gets the experience to get a little bit outside of the highway, we know that this coverage is not everywhere. Yeah. So, and I, I used to say to my, uh, some of my friends who they think they're safer with a cell phone, I said, yes, you're safe with a cell phone as long as we are within a city that have a good coverage. But if you go in a forest or a known mm -hmm. field, so, so I think there is definitely a lot to do. I think there is definitely a need, I think, to be connected all the times, especially for safety reason, to have this yeah. connection. I think as a human, this happened also very fast. So I know that there is, I would never say there is an issue. Is it too much, too fast? Are we addicted to our cell phone right now? I think it's definitively something that we can discuss. I yeah. am sure the technology happened so fast that we will not, not everyone is using it appropriately. But I appreciate that I can call my son, my mom, yeah. If I want to, the connection yeah. is there. It's not because they're on vacation or they, uh, you lose the connection. I think it's nice to have it there. Yeah. But we should use it reasonably. And I, as, I think right now we are not there to have the connection everywhere all the time with now, a certain data rate. So. Now, the, uh, some cities have free Wi-Fi. Yes. For everywhere in the city, right? Um, is it possible that if they can do that, is it possible that we can just go to Wi-Fi and eliminate uh, some of these other... I don't think we can completely eliminate the mobility. No. Wi-Fi, the way it is done by itself, is really not built for uh, like a cell phone for a mobility. There is a lot of processing and protocols to guarantee that you go from one cell to another and you still have the yeah. seamless, continuous uh, communication. So I don't think Wi-Fi can per se guarantee that. But you will have a seamless of uh, mobility, that's for sure, as you're walking slowly or something like that. That's, I think, that Wi-Fi can guarantee. But uh, as I said, all those Bluetooth, those small connection, Wi-Fi and cell phone, to me, they're not competing. They're really different services for different applications. So you think they'll always be with us uh, using their different applications? Absolutely, yes. Um, might something new come along? Um, uh, the way I, I see it, to me, I see just bits going through links. So to me, the physical layer, the, the new thing is we reach that channel capacity. In terms of application, I think, honestly, I, even myself, I would not imagine all those applications we have, especially when we linked the cell phone with the localization, so the GPS. Now you have the localization of the mobile, yes. and you have the, the connection, the high data rate. So you can tell you are close to a restaurant, you have all those stuff. But I think definitively the part that not much application have been told is what we call machine to machine communication, yes. which is, I don't know, fridge telling you you need to buy milk or fridge ordering the milk from the store, the store, the milk comes to the home. Yeah, oh, I don't know if I want to delegate yeah. all that authority <laughs> to my refrigerator. Um, but so, stuff like this. But yeah. imagine that the machine are not connected as they could be. It's so cheap so to like have if, I, if I'm dieting, I, I shouldn't be eating uh, too much of something. My refrigerator would like, not open, say, would yeah, not yeah, let exactly. me have it. <laughs> yeah, it would lock the refrigerator. There might be a market for this. <laughs> yes, um, but you can see it like if you're now taking- Now Purdue's gonna own the idea though, I should have <laughs> yeah, mentioned it. Yeah. Exactly, but imagine you're taking the train, let's say. Yeah. And the information that the train have been delayed for whatever reason is somewhere. Yeah. So maybe you need a plan B for that day to go to yeah. work. So there is no reason your cell phone will not wake you up maybe 15 minutes before time to tell you, you know what, the train that you usually take is delayed. See, I would be very upset with my cell phone. <laughs> my cell phone and I would have a serious problem if it woke me up 15 minutes early yes. and I didn't ask it to. So this is what I see, um, yeah. what I call machine to machine, which yeah. is cell phone communicating to train stations that without yeah. the human being necessarily involved. Yeah. I mean, as, and the limit of what you appreciate, of course. It could be too much, I agree with you. Yeah, I saw the Terminator movies and I think that's what they were about, <laughs> but, I, but, but we won't go there. Um, I have, um, I have a thermostat mm -hmm. um, and a doorbell right now that yes. are connected up to my wireless system. Okay. And if somebody comes to the door, yes. they don't have to do anything. The doorbell rings itself oh, for them. Cool. <laughs> and then it, it goes to my phone and lets me know that somebody's there. I think that's about as far as I want to let my but phone intrude But that's nice, isn't it? Life. It's nice, no? It's very good, yeah, it's very good. Sometimes it lets me know that the cats are walking by outside. <laughs> that's true, uh, this is the whole uh, the misdetection problem. But yeah. I think as long as we know how to make our life easier, not 
controlling, not yeah. having control over it, I think those application, they're really, I mean, technically they're feasible right now. Well, so, and you've thought about this a little bit. You mentioned the refrigerator, yes. seriously, right? Yes. I mean, where to else? me, especially the milk. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I would love to have help yeah. with that milk. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, we have coffee machines that turn themselves on before yes, we wake like up, a right? Yes, yeah. a special um, time. So, I mean, where else does this go? Have you, have you speculated? Do you, you go to conferences with other? I think also the health other... issue, I yeah. mean, at a different level. Yeah. That the health, I think, uh, it's a different story because I yeah. don't think, I personally don't think we are ready to have uh, chips inside of our body oh, right good. now. Oh, good, I'm glad to hear that. Yes, yeah, yeah. so I, I'm, I don't think yeah. we're already there. But I think if I'm very sick, and I needed certain chips to, I don't know, to, to, yeah. to measure the level of whatever in my blood. Yeah. I will be, I'll be ready to do that. So yeah. stuff like this, the chip will connect with the hospital or the doctor to say if there is some issues, some uh, old parents. Um, we can detect actually if someone is falling, if we do some kind of chips in the, in the, the shoes they're wearing or something like this. So there's yeah. stuff that we can detect. And I think there is definitely a lot to do with the health. To monitoring the health. Well, and I read a lot of science fiction, so my next you know, thought here is that, okay, so you get this chip and then yeah. you can go to your computer at the end of the day and see what your heart rate was like yes, and how yes. much sugar you took in and metabolized mm -hmm. and all of that. I mean, that maybe that's not a bad thing, right? Yeah, I and, mean, that's what I'm thinking. I think yeah. that if for special needs, I, I, th I can see that some will need it. Right. I think if you're healthy and okay, you may, it's not worth the well, surgery. But even if you are, I mean, your doctor maybe has a computer that's then tracking all of this. You get a phone yeah. call and they say, exactly. you know, they say, uh, you know what? you're going to have a heart attack, heart attack at 11 o'clock today. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, you're better to slow down. Yeah, yeah, stay in bed. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, but I, yeah, I mean, this application. There is also, I don't know, it's a little bit different in the, the field of transportation, this vehicle to vehicle communication. That, yeah. that, I think it's very well, close I, to I want that. I want it to be like Star Trek, you know, like the, the two ships pull up next to one another and they get one another on the screens. I want to be able to see the person in the car next to me. But we'll <laughs> have to cover that the next time okay. we meet. That's all we have time for today. Uh, thank you for joining us on Kelly Met Roundtable. I'm your host, Tom Roach. Have a great day.